It's a cool morning here in Appalachia, in the southern mountains of Appalachia. When we got up this morning, it was in the low 50s. Uh, and over here in the shade, it's still kind of chilly. Out in the sunshine, I've been sweating as we worked. But when we come to take our usual popsicle rest, I told Matt I was too cold. I didn't want a popsicle. So he's, he's eating his popsicle. But we've been spreading mulch on all the gardens this morning. And we do that every year. And over the years, it's really helped enrich our soil. But I did not grow up in a family that uh, Pap and Granny never put mulch on their gardens ever. Not once, ever. They didn't even think about it. They might <clears throat> enrich the soil. They tried to do that maybe with a load of chicken litter or something. Maybe from some uh, dirt from the woods, rich dirt from the woods. But as far as using mulch, they never did. And they grew plenty of food. They fed us, you know. So it's, mulch is not a necessity. I love to use it, Matt and I do, because our soil is very poor. But over the years, how many years have we been gardening now? Uh, 25. Yeah, over the years, constantly re-enriching the soil every year, adding compost and adding mulch has really helped our soil uh, to, be, to be better and to grow better. Another reason I really like to use mulch is that it suppresses the weeds. So I hate weeds. Weeding is the, I mean, every gardener that gardens, I would imagine, that's the, the thing they like the least. It's so fun to grow plants and especially to produce food, but even just beautiful flowers. But the pain in your neck is always weeds and how fast they grow and how they multiply. Well, mulch helps tamp them down and, and they still come up, but they, it just makes it way... Uh, less you have to deal with less weeds don't you agree Matt yeah yeah it really suppresses their growth yeah so I, so that's another great reason why I like to use it now when it comes to using mulch there's so many different things that people like to use uh, straw we've never used straw before I've always wanted to the last couple of years especially but it is so expensive in our area that we just can't afford it we can't afford to use it so mostly what we use is we use uh, tree mulch. Is that what you call it, mm -hmm. tree mulch? There's so many uh, in the area that we live in, there's so many sawmills. So how many, How many? I mean, I can think of like three. Well, there's one really close to us, Buckhorn is. And then isn't there one in Ranger or in uh, Snow Hill out there? Isn't there one? Um, and Mondays used to be on up in Marble. Is it still operational? No, it's not operational yeah. anymore, but I think... Uh Brawley's out there in uh, Ranger still is. Yeah. Anyway, several of those locally, so that's a good place for us to get mulch. Um, a lot of our local uh, electrical EMC, they they mulch when they, they create chips and mulch when they cut right-of-ways or they're just clearing up the power lines, and then they will pour that usually um, somewhere on the side of the road. I know there's one on the four lane maybe a place and then one on highway, what is that, Blairsville Highway? Mm -hmm. And then you can just go freely and get it loaded up in your car and take it home with you or your truck or whatever it is. And there's one at the rec park too. And there's one at the rec park too if you're a local person. Of course you can order people, have people bring it. That's usually what we do is we order a whole dump truck load and then that lasts us a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, and so that's another way to do it. If the EMC comes to your house, a couple of years ago they come and they were trimming just their annual, ever how often they come to trim, not annual, probably more like every three or four years. And I got Katie to go ask them um, if they mind, instead of taking it to wherever they were gonna take it, if they could bring it up here and dump it at our house. And they said, sure, so they did. And so that was easy mulch and free that year. Another thing we like to use is um, mushroom compost. And that's just like the leftovers that's left over from a mushroom growing enterprise. So it's, it's not as um, like bulky or thick as mulch, uh, but it's really good to enrich your soil. And we've used it for many years and we really, really like it. And our local, um, what do you call it, Wayne Jr.'s yeah, farm store, store our feed store, they have it and, a lot, and some other places. And then again, you can order it. There's people that will bring it to you. So it might be readily available in your area. And it's a little pricey, but it does really, really good. Yeah, it's more expensive than the than the mulch. Um, <coughs> but when it comes to mulch, and you can do your own, you should do your own due diligence and research, but there's so many different opinions. Like when me and Matt first started using mulch, well, we didn't consult anything. We just used it, and it worked good, and we just kept using it. But after that, I read a lot of people believe that you should not use fresh mulch. In other, other words, you should let it sit for a year or something. 
um, and, and we don't do that and, but you like again you should do your re own research and decide for yourself but a lot of people believe using fresh mulch will leach out the nitrogen I believe it is from your soil but we've just never had an issue with that I mean we've used it like that year the EMC brought it we put it directly on the garden and it was fine um, but but so but there's just different opinions about that that you'll read about yeah, our soil's already so bad you can't hurt it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what we were thinking in the beginning. <laughs> Ours is so bad, uh, we should just go for it and go ahead and do it and see what happens. But we, truthfully, we didn't know that you weren't supposed to, and then we did it and it was fine. So we don't ever worry about that. The mulch we're using today has, has actually sit. Um, it's a load that I ordered at the end of last year's growing season just because I was concerned about being able to get it and I wanted to make sure that I had some to start the spring <laughs> garden. And then this was the first year that I knew um, that I had not been working a full-time job outside the home. And so I knew I would be here and so I thought, well, if I have that mulch sitting there ready to go as soon as those first days of spring that I want to start gardening, I can go ahead, I'll have my mulch, I'll have my compost and I can do whatever I need to do. In the days when I was working uh, full time, it was we were usually scrambling like, oh gosh, we need mulch. Oh gosh, we should have got some compost. So I was trying last year to get ahead of the ahead of the game. So that mulch has sit there and kind of decayed. And uh, last year we used some mulch uh, that Matt had access to at work. It was kind of like some of those. It wasn't the EMC. It was that you guys actually had chipped it up? Yeah, it's some we cut out from around an old building and. We chipped it ourselves, and then it sat there for, it probably sat there a year before I got any of it. Yeah, and they just needed it moved, so right. Matt said he would move it, he would take it home with him. Right. So when you start actually putting the mulch on, what we found works good for us, again, you can research and do, do it ever how you decide that would work best for you. And the best thing is just to try it and then see. But we put it right up close to the plants after they come up. And then we cover the walkways and everything. We just do it all. We cover everything. And that way it helps with the moisture, you know, when it rains. It helps keep everything moist. It helps keep those weeds down. And then gradually as it breaks down, uh, it enriches your soil. And it also, that layer gives a place for like all the beneficial in like worms and things that you want to to actually do the tilling of the garden for you to actually break up the dirt, especially if you're like us and you've got that red clay, hard packed, rocky dirt. Uh, so it allows for that to happen too. Another thing you might want to research again, uh, just to figure out what works best for you, is um, like go back to the straw that we can't really afford. Some people might use ha old hay that they have, uh, but you have to, then I've heard people say you have to be careful because it has a lot of seeds in it and then you're actually planting uh, more weeds there for yourself. But, and then people also say you should be careful and, and know where it come from, if it was sprayed or if it's organic, those kind of things. And even the mulch, some people only want to use a certain type of tree, like our local lumber places, I don't even know what they saw. I mean, I don't know, but whatever it is, we take it. Like when the EMC come, it was probably some pine, it was probably some oak, it was probably mm -hmm. some little dogwoods or maybe even laurels. Mm -hmm. It was just a mixture of whatever they were cleaning the right of ways and we used it and it worked fine. But some people are more particular about what exactly what the mulch come from before they use it, kind of checking that part out before you start. So that's definitely something you can do if you want to research further. So even though I grew up, like I said, and Pap had a garden every year of my life, and he never used mulch, and it grew food and all that, I do think it's beneficial to use mulch. But if you're in a situation where you can't, and it wasn't that he couldn't, it was just that he didn't grow up with that. I mean, he was just doing the garden like he had uh, been doing it, you know, his whole life from when his parents taught him how to garden, how to make a garden, as we would say. Um, I do think it's beneficial if you can, but if you can't, you know, Pap in my, in my lifetime is just certainly living proof that we had a garden every year. And even after me and Matt was married, we had a big garden with Pap every year. And we never even thought about mulching it, did we? Mm -hmm. And we, we grew plenty of beans and plenty of taters and corn and um, tomatoes and squash and zucchini and everything. And it was good eating and certainly enough for us to put up between me and Granny. So it was certainly a success, even though we, we didn't use mulch. I guess that one way, the biggest way I look at mulch for me and Matt is that uh, the biggest reason that we would use it is kind of twofold. Our soil is so poor. We're kind of up on the side of the mountain, whereas Pap's big garden was down near the creek. It was just better, better dirt to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, 
and so ours is really poor where we've kind of just hew out, hewn out a place uh, to grow around our house here on the side of the mountain and it's just all red clay rocky dirt it's just no good for whatever reason so the the main reasons for us would be to over the years we have really built our soil up and then because we're lazy and we don't like to weed <laughs> we don't like to weed that's the worst part of, of having a garden is the weeding especially if you ever let it get away from you yeah. uh, there's nothing worse than trying to weed like what um, 12 inch high or something corn or maybe mm -hmm. seven or eight inch corn uh, that you've let the weeds get away from you because of you didn't have time or weeds are taller than planting right and you've got to really be careful you can't just hoe and are the you know the you had a whole lot of days of rainy weather or bad weather where you couldn't and we've certainly done that haven't we yeah. and that's no fun so I, I can't imagine though actually mulching a cornfield so I don't know how that would work here at uh, where we're at now I mean at our house we don't have room to grow corn I wish we did but we don't and we don't get enough sunshine either here being on the north side but um, I can't imagine, if you had a little plot of corn, I guess you could mulch it. But when I think about Pap's big garden, that would have been some work. Yeah, it? that would have been bad. Yeah, probably would have. Might have made it grow better, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So this morning, so far, we've been able to mulch all of our, kind of our raised beds areas in the back of the house. So that job's all done. And then now we've just got to do the front of the house, the big area in the front of the house. And maybe one more little raised bed on the side of the bank that we couldn't get to back there. Um, and then we'll be done with that chore for another year till next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny in the beginning of the gardening, it's you do it in stages. Of course, at first you're just anxious to get out there and plant some green onions and lettuce for some kilt lettuce and uh, maybe some radishes and beets and cabbage, all those early things. And then you've got to do the main main growing or the main uh, planting. planting. Yeah, so you've got to get all your beans and your squash and your zucchini and all that kind of stuff. And then you're like, got that done. And then it's kind of, and I guess even before actually that first part you're worrying about, if you're like us and you start your seeds, you're worrying about starting seedlings and stuff. But once you get all the green beans planted and all the squash and uh, kind of the warm weather stuff, then for me and Matt, then the next step is mulching all of it, making sure that it's all covered. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we kind of, what do old timers call that lay by? I guess our garden's lay by, laid by then. Yeah. That's what they would call it the last time they hoed their garden, um, hold, hoed their corn, not their garden. And that was the point when the corn was actually big enough, bigger than all those weeds we was talking about, so that it could reach the sunshine and it was kind of like they knew then they had done all they could do it was gonna make it. it was gonna make it or it wasn't but it was they were done so they yeah. laid it by and that was usually what about July yeah about July uh, so we will be laid by our garden will be laid by before then uh, hopefully by if not by it probably won't be by the end of the day because we're gonna run out of mulch but maybe by the by next weekend we we'll get some more mulch and finish the rest of it and then our garden will be laid by and then you just get to look forward to eating all that wonderful bounty that comes out of it and it's time to start canning yeah start time to start canning matt says that's his favorite thing is the canning oh, well. I, I love th canning i think my favorite part is the the growing i love to eat though i love the canning but i love the growing it uh, matt probably don't like that part because he says what do you got for me to do today <laughs> how hard are you gonna work me today because uh, he's the one that has to has the strength to do the heavy lifting, I guess you'd say. So we hope you'll leave a comment and tell us, do you mulch, do you use mulch in your garden? Maybe you use straw. Maybe it's more affordable in your area than it is uh, here in our area. Uh, but tell us your favorite ways to, to utilize mulch in the garden. And as always, we hope you'll just keep dropping back by to help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of making a garden.